Hello again, audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, back to talk about more sound gear. And today we're going to take a, take a look at a different kind of product than I've done on this channel before. And that is the Singer SU2 USB bridge, okay, which is a digital to digital converter, it converts one kind of digital input into different kinds of digital output. And it's also a USB uh, interface in that it connects to the USB output of whatever your source is, be that a PC or some kinds of streamers and all of that can have USB outputs on them, all that too. And so uh, that's what this is here for. And so we'll talk a little bit about not only the performance of this thing, but why you might want to use such a device um, uh, with your gear. All right. So yeah, let's dive into that here. So um, really simple utilitarian front panel, right? You get the Singer name, the name of the product, and you get these three LED indicator lights that are just for power, whether something is playing, and then if there's a DSD signal detected. That's it. Round back. You do get a nice power supply. Um, and why do we get a nice power supply on such a simple device? And that's because I got a little too ahead of myself here. That's okay. But this is a 429 US dollar product and it's available from Shenzhen Audio and Appos. And I think you can get it on Amazon and just several places around the web. I can link to a couple down in the description below. Um, but uh, yeah, so $430 for what seems like a simple piece in, in practice, but there's a lot going on here, which we'll unpack. So around back to the back panel again, AC power input, right? Here is your digital input, USB, okay? We've got full size USB input there. And then we have up to four digital outputs. We have over here a three pin XLR AES EBU output. We have two coaxial SPDIF outputs, a BNC type connector, and then an RCA type connector. And then there is this uh, I2S connector here, which uses a uh, HDMI like port on it. Okay. And then this right here is for connecting an, an external 10 megahertz clock, if you wish to do that. Okay. So why use this device? Well, I have this device because my flagship DAC in my own personal uh, collection is the Berkeley Audio Designs Alpha Series 2, which is a little bit older model and it has no USB input. And since I use a PC as one of my primary audio sources, like I had to have something like this to connect it to my computer unless I wanted to use the really cheap uh, Toastlink optical output on my motherboard, which I did not want to do with a DAC of that high caliber. So a DDC or a USB bridge was necessary in a situation like that. Now beyond that, the USB implementation and the, the quality that you get from this is going to be better than the vast majority of USB implementations on digital to analog converters until you get into like the multi kilobuck high range of DACs that, uh, on, and particularly later generation high end DACs that have higher quality USB inputs on them. All right. And then also, another reason you might consider a product like this is maybe you have a multi DAC system. As you get further into this hobby, it just becomes apparent as you listen to more and more gear that some gear gets along with other gear better than it gets along with yet other gear. Okay, we call that synergy. And sometimes you just get a DAC that sounds particularly great with a particular amp. And so you wanna run those two together and then maybe you have another DAC and another amp that those two sound really great with each other and so forth. And you want to be able to listen to both uh, on the same system, So, but from the same source, be that the same streamer or a PC or whatever. So this, with its multiple outputs that all work simultaneously, allows you connect to connect up to four DACs, okay, without having to use any splitters or anything like that. So if you're running a multi-DAC setup, then something like this could also be attractive. Now, it should be said that I2S protocols are not yet standardized. And I'm filming this in, uh, I believe, yeah, it's October 8th of 2021 as I film this. And so just because this has an I2S output does not mean that it's going to work with all DACs that have an I2S input. 
So it will, but it will work with many. So if you're interested in this product, just make sure that you do your homework to see if they play well together. Okay. Cause again, I, I don't think all of that has been standardized yet. We'll get there someday, I think. All right. So those are the reasons you might want a DDC. Either your DAC does not have a USB input and you would like to use one. Okay. Um, you want to improve the quality of the USB implementation on your DAC if it already has one or you want to run a multi-DAC multi system with bit-perfect audio all from the same source with a USB output. Okay, so those, that's why you're looking at one of these things usually. Okay, so performance-wise, what does it give you? Now, I will say that I have used this in conjunction with just about every DAC that I have that has both a USB and SPDIF inputs. And in every case where I have done that, and that has been with the Cord Hugo 2, the shit Bifrost 2, the shit Modius, um, I'm sure there are others in there that I have long since moved on from, okay? Um, in every case, this provided a noticeable audible improvement over those DAX uh, USB inputs on their own. The biggest difference, I think, probably came with uh, at the opposite ends of the price spectrum like both the hugo 2 and the shit modius both really lit up even more and they're already very fine sounding dax at their price points from their usb inputs but using the su2 here as a usb bridge and then connecting to the coax inputs of those two dax and it's just everything got better right? The, the, the staging didn't necessarily get bigger, but it just sounded a little bit more open. And it's like, you could hear the sound stage where the music was happening, but then you could hear like the room around it too. So it's like, not only do you get that sound staging, but you hear that that sound stage is existing in, in this bigger real world space, which was especially true for like live recordings of, of symphonic works uh, and that sort of thing or for live recordings of concerts and whatnot, where you do have a stage where music is being presented, but then that stage exists within a concert hall or an arena or something of that. And you could, you could tell audibly that that was going on, which is not a thing that I really noticed from the USB inputs on those uh, products near to the level that I noticed on the SU2. Okay, we also get improved timbre we get improved detail retrieval. We get more um, macrodynamic punch and slam kind of coming out of this. Like basically any performance technicality you want to think of just gets a little bit better. There's less noise, so it's a cleaner presentation, a blacker sonic background, if you will. So, I mean, improving that USB implementation by having jitter reduction and an improved reclocking and all of that just really lifts the performance across the board um, on all of those things. Now, is that difference in performance worth the $430? Okay, now that, there's not a single yes or no, uh, yes or no answer to that question, right? So a lot of it's going to depend on, on price and then like where adding the price of a of an SU2 lands you relative to the price of like the step up model um, in a company's line of DAX or like a competitor's um, model or something like that. What do I mean? So if you were to pair this say with the shit Modius, which is a, a $200 DAC, and I reviewed that recently and I'll put a link down below there. Like this made a huge difference in the performance of the Modius over the Modius's USB input. Again, everything got better. The detail retrieval, the staging, the imaging, the separation, the, the macrodynamic punch, the tamper, just everything. Everything got better, right? And, and the Modius started to sound really close in technical um, proficiency to its big brother, the Bifrost 2 um, model. Not quite... Okay, but very close, getting very, very close. It was not quite as good in direct A, B comparison as the Bifrost 2 was from its own USB input. Okay, so then you got have to, you know, make the decision. All right, Modius plus 
SU2 is about $630. A brand new Bifrost 2 is $699. Is that $69, $70-ish dollar difference in price um, worth going SU2 plus Modius, or do you just pick up a Bifrost 2? Not a universal answer to that question. Again, it is situational. Now, if it's going to be your only DAC setup, I would say just go for the Bifrost 2 because the performance ceiling is higher on that period, right? But if you have a multi-DAC setup or you have a more complicated system, like you need the, you know, there, there might be other situational factors in there that make you lean the other way and say, you know what, I, I want that Modius plus SU2. What does this do for Bifrost 2? Generally speaking, the Bifrost 2 sounds better from its USB input than it does its SPDIF inputs. That's because the USB implementation on the Bifrost 2 is excellent for its price. It really is good. Now, the SU2 here improved the performance of the Bif Bifrost 2 noticeably. I think the gap in performance improvement was larger for the Modius than it was for the Bifrost 2, but it was definitely there. Now, is it worth spending the 699 USD plus the 429 USD and, you know, spending essentially 1150 bucks, okay, or 1140 bucks close to 1138. Okay. For the SU2 plus Bifrost 2? I don't know. Maybe you should just save all of that money and look for a used Yggdrasil or something like that. Okay? Or look at one of the lower price mo models from Hollow Audio at that point. Again, I can't make that decision for you, but those are the factors that you have to weigh. Um, like, is it worth it for the Hugo 2? Maybe. Like, the Hugo 2 is also transportable. This is not. But if you're using the Hugo 2 as your desktop DAC as well as a transportable solution, or you're using it in your two-channel system or something like that, like, is the $429 on top of the $2495 for the, the Hugo 2, so getting close to $3,000 there, does that become a better option than, say, the new Spring 3 Level 3 from Hollow Audio out there or something like that. I don't know. I haven't heard the Spring 3 yet. I heard the Spring 2. It's really good, okay? So I imagine the Spring 3 is also amazing, okay? But again, I can't answer that question for you, but those are the kinds of questions that you have to ask yourself. But again, like, I have to have something like this if I want to use my Alpha 2 with USB, and I do, right? Okay, so that's why it's here. So... This can give you an, uh, a really noticeable performance increase over the USB inputs on a lot of DACs up until you start getting up into the levels of price where those companies are putting just as much time and money into R&D on their USB implementations as they are to their DAC implementations. And then you just have to start asking the question if it's worth it. But there are definitely situations where a product like this is helpful. And this is a pretty darn good one. Right, like I, I have no complaints about its performance in terms of what it does. It does its job really well, I think, for its price and, and all of that. Just a clean sound. Okay, um, it passes MQA onto your DAC if you need it to do that. It passes DSD. It does all of those things. Okay, it just um, does it make sense for your situation and for your budget, or do you just? take the money you would have spent on your DAC plus this and just move up to the next level of DAC. That's your call, depending on your situation and what you need, okay? But SU2, if it fits your needs, good product, okay? I can give it a thumbs up. It will do good things for you if it fits your, your needs and your situation. All right, so there are my thoughts on the Singer SU2, DDC, USB bridge, whatever you want to call it. I am Wave Theory. I've been doing written reviews of sound gear on HeadFi and HiFi Guides Forum for over a year now, so please check out my work there. This YouTube channel where I've gone to the video realm to do reviews is pretty new, so if you like what you see and you want me to keep doing this, then please like and subscribe to my channel, and be on the lookout for how you can help support me even more going forward. So until next time, enjoy the music. <laughs>